Quite simply, they were the best in college football. They were also the worst in college football. Have I confused you a little bit? Well, I'll clear up the confusion right now by mentioning just two words. Now I'll clear everything up. Texas Tech. Ah, okay, that, that makes a little more sense now because let's face it, a year ago they were the best in college football. In 2016, top offense in the country as far as passing and as far as total offense. In fact, total O, they amassed over 560 yards per game. Quite nice. When it came to total defense, though, this team absolutely sucked rhinoceros balls. They were embarrassing to watch. Dead last in total defense, giving up over 530 yards per contest. The Red Raiders won three of their first four, but lost six of their final eight, finishing five and seven and bowl ineligible. Entering year number five, Cliff Kingsbury, some have to wonder, is this the final year for Texas Tech? And it probably will be unless some progress, some notable progress is shown. We're going to begin with a good side for the Red Raiders and their offense, wide receivers. They returned four of the top five, including Kiki Cutie, um, an inside receiver at 5'11", very productive last year, nearly 900 yards in receiving. Complimenting him, Cameron Batson is only 5'9", but he can make things happen. We saw that last year with him receiving 60 passes. Of course, people around Oklahoma remember Batson because he played his high school ball at Oklahoma City Millwood. Your outside receivers, a couple of tall targets. Derek Woolley's at 6'4", um, last year averaging 15, uh, 15 yards per catch. And rounding out the receiving court, returning, you have Dylan Cantrell at 6'5", a senior, eight touchdown catches a year ago. The team would have really been aided if Jonathan Giles was still on the roster. He was the number one receiver last year with over 1,000 yards in receiving, but transferred to LSU. The quarterback, who, who's going to throw to these guys? It won't be Patrick Mahomes anymore. We know that. Mahomes last year threw for over 5,000 yards and was the only Big 12 player picked in the opening round of this past spring's NFL draft. So, yeah, losing him, you talk about some major shoes to fill. That's now the responsibility of Nick Shimanek, who started his career at Iowa, but seemed like he transferred just as soon as he arrived there. Rolled the dice a little bit because when he came to Lubbock, um, he came as a walk-on, gave up his scholarship from the Hawkeyes to be a part of the Red Raiders. And at that time, when he transferred, he got involved in the furniture restoration business in the Lubbock area. Last year, got out of the business because the Red Raiders offered him a scholarship. Shimanek played only four games last year. But his big highlight was against Kansas with the Jayhawks. They had cut the lead to nine points in the third quarter of that game. Patrick Mahomes had a shoulder injury. Shimanek saved the day with four touchdown passes, and the Red Raiders won the game after that easily. Running game, it's amazing that the Red Raiders had the number one total offense in college football, despite the fact that they had virtually no ground game whatsoever. Barely over 100 yards on the ground per game, which was sixth worst last year in college football. Two big reasons for that. One, the offensive line just wasn't as experienced. And number two, there was no DeAndre Washington. I remember two years ago, Washington had over 15 yards in rushing behind an offensive line in which at least three of the guys had three years starting experience. No such thing last year. The offensive line was very raw. And you could tell by the totals because two years ago, they rushed for almost 2,600 yards. Last year, not even 1,300. That's right, the rushing total got cut in half. And so it was a one-dimensional attack last year for the Red Raiders. So to get them back to being a two-dimensional attack, we'll see how they do as far as offensive line. You got three back, two of them who started as freshmen, talking about Madison Akamnonu at left guard and at right tackle Terrence Steele, who, by the way, started every game last year for the Red Raiders. Another starter you have back is at the center position in Paul Stars, a junior, played in eight games a year ago and started all eight. The other two positions, you have left tackle Travis Bruffy, um, participated in all 12 games, though didn't start last year, um, sophomore now. And Jack Anderson, one of the more highly talented recruits for the Red Raiders. ESPN had him ranked last year um, as the number four offensive guard in the country. They think he could start right away at the right guard position. As far as the running game goes, we'll see how this pans out. Daly on Ward um, as a sophomore now, as a freshman. Uh, led the team in rushing, but only had over 400 yards of production. And Justin Stockton um, will also, too, share the duties of running back senior. Last year, uh, 
not a whole lot of protection as far as the ground game. Only had 40 carries, but did have um, a couple of receiving touchdowns last year and caught 21 passes. Let's get now to the defense for the Red Raiders. And not only was the worst last year in college football as far as total D, but the second worst team in college football last year in total D, Arizona State, gave up 406 fewer yards. So it wasn't even close as far as Texas Tech having the worst D. Several reasons for this. Injuries, of course, played a part of it. Reshuffling players had to do um, a great deal with that as well. But just lack of execution played a big role in it. And they couldn't get to the quarterback. Only 14 sacks last year for the Red Raiders out of that 4-2-5 alignment. Only one full-time starter up front's back. That's Colin Hill, a junior, who started every game last year but one and had 32 tackles. One guy you won't see on the defensive line is going to be Braden Fajeco. Just like Giles, Fajeco transferred to LSU, so that doesn't help the cause. The other defensive end, Eli Howard, just a sophomore. We're waiting to see what this guy can do on the field. Two years ago, was at North Texas, but redshirted, had to sit out last year because of the transfer rule. At nose tackle, uh, McKeelan Thomas, uh, the only senior amongst the four starting up front for the Red Raiders, um, played in 10 games last year but didn't start any of them. And that defensive tackle, Broderick Washington, whom as a freshman um, played all 12 games but only started one and had 13 tackles. So the defensive line, I'm not too optimistic about this area. There's just not a whole lot of experience there other than Colin Hill. Linebacker, more experience to deal with here at least. You have Jordan Brooks whom as a freshman had 86 tackles a year ago. So his future looks bright at middle linebacker. Weak side linebacker, the Red Raiders welcome back Dakota Allen two years ago, had 87 tackles, but last year got kicked off the team, legal issues. So Allen went to go play junior college ball last year. In the meantime, the legal issues did get dropped, and last December, Texas Tech reinstated him. As far as the secondary goes, last year they gave up 315 yards per game, Fourth worst in college football. We'll see if it improves even a hair with uh, DJ Polite Bray, a, a senior whom last year started nine games at corner, had 31 tackles, and at a free safety position returning is Jay Sean uh, Johnson, a junior, who had over uh, 30 tackles. Other three positions are going to be new starters for the Red Raiders, and two of them come from the junior college ranks at one corner, Octavius Morgan, and at the strong safety position, uh, Botany Dorsey, a, a junior. And rounding out the uh, starting lineup defensively for the Red Raiders, at the nickelback, you have Douglas Coleman, who played in 11 games and started in three of them and had um, 26 tackles a year ago. As far as special teams, well, when you score as many touchdowns as the Red Raiders do, you don't really kick field goals that often, but Clayton Hatfield was productive during his limited opportunities kicking field goals, including four or five from 40 yards or longer, but did miss five extra points, including one that bit Texas Tech in the ass in Stillwater when he missed an extra point in the final moments of that game. Red Raiders lost by one. Yikes. Punting, who knows? That spot's up in the air. Last year, they were not consistent as far as punting and also, too, as far as handling snaps. So that's something to watch out for. Looking at the schedule for the Red Raiders, if Texas Tech has any aspirations of going to a bowl game, anything less than a 3-0 start is not going to cut it. Eastern Washington should be a win, but the bye week occurs way too early in the year. It's before the Arizona State game, game number two. It's a rematch of last year's game in which both teams combined for well over 120 points. The following week, even though Tom Herman's not at Houston anymore, still will not be an easy game for the Red Raiders to try to go to Houston and win. The Big 12 opener, September 30th, Oklahoma State lately has owned this rivalry. The next week, you at least get Kansas, but it's on the road. The next week, much tougher, having to play at West Virginia. And we'll see if the Red Raiders can avenge that loss against Iowa State last year. Still hard to believe that the Red Raiders lost to the Cyclones by 56 points last year. At Oklahoma, forget it. Kansas State at home, that's early November. And two teams that Tech beat last year that many people didn't think they were going to beat the way the season was going. Baylor and TCU, you get a back-to-back -back this time November 11th in Arlington against the Bears, and you host the Horned Frogs. And the day after Thanksgiving, you play Texas in Austin. Again, the offense is going to light up the scoreboard, and I do see the running game improving a little bit. But when was the last time Texas Tech played at least halfway decent defense? Well, that's too long. I got the Red Raiders winning five games, and I do think this will be the finale for Cliff Kingsbury. That's my look at Texas Tech. We'll see you next time.